look. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Frizy's Corner Bar. Buenos dias a todos. That's welcome, everyone, in Spanish. So. So tonight's show is holy guacamole. Yes. And we got a little bit of tequila going on, too, I think, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, it's been a good week. Hopefully you guys have had a great week. We got our second COVID shots this week. And it's been, um, I'm going to take this hat off just because I'm inside. <laughs> and it's not good manners to wear a hat inside. Um, I had a really good week. How was your week? My week was a good week. Was good. A good week. So it took, I actually, after that shot, I, it, it, I was really tired for a couple of days. I just really started to feel better a few days ago. So. I know Donna Shoei, I had, Kevin had gotten a shot on 420, same day I did. And I felt fine when I got back. I actually cut the front yard. And then later that afternoon, I was feeling kind of cruddy. I called Kate and said, I don't think I can teach tomorrow. I woke up. I felt fine. But I didn't think I should teach because she had already canceled the class. And then around, and I actually went for a run. And um, that afternoon, it just kind of knocked me out. I was out till 5, 5, 5.30 or something. I just felt achy and tired. I couldn't sleep. But um, anyway, felt good. I did my push-up challenge three days this week. Uh, bring Sally up, bring Sally down. It's three and a half minutes of great push-ups. Google it, try it out, see what you can do. I also did it for squats, and I did it for high-low planks. And it's an awesome uh, change-up of the workout. Um, I ran this morning. It's a nice day for that. Um, I made a Mexican pot roast because we are kind of doing a Cinco de Mayo theme this week. Um, I'm making a guacamole that um, I've never shared the recipe, and I've been making it since 2009. And every time I, uh, you know, whenever I would do a do a ladies' uh, night or a gathering. Uh, when I used to, when we have to bring an appetizer, I would always bring the guacamole, and everybody raves about it. So yeah, it it's is an a, excellent recipe. It is. It's super. It's easy. It's good. I modified the original recipe a long time back, and um, uh, yeah. And so I made a Mexican pot roast. I posted that on Friday's Corner Bar. You can take a look at. When I started it and where it's at now, so I kind of shredded it apart. You know? And it smells amazing, and it tastes really good. I, I'm looking forward to dinner tonight. I was nervous about it because I took the recipe, and then I made my own modifications, but I tried to stay with some of the base spices that they had recommended. And one of them was a whole tablespoon of cayenne pepper, and I was afraid that it would be overwhelming when I tasted it. Originally, I was like, oh, this is hot as hell. And then it just really mellowed out a lot. So um, I'm, I'm anxious for it. And I'm going to serve that up with some refried beans that I make. Um, I do my own special on that. And then I'm going to do a tossed mi mixed green salad. So, Shannon? I'm looking forward to dinner. So we have a couple comments I just want to put up here. Sandra says um, that... She just made her margaritas. Cheers. We will Cheers. be cheering with you in just a minute. And then, let's see, Kevin Showy. Kevin. Kevin had a great week. I'm glad you had a good week. And Laura Olson. Hi, Laura. Hey, Laura. She says, yes, we love Mike's guacamole. <laughs> and Sandra says, yay, share the recipe. Love the guacamole. So the recipe is on... Uh, www.friesyscornerbar.com. So that's where we put all of our recipes. And Carolyn Flatter says, Mike's guac is delicious. So before... Um, Carolyn, I got balls too. <laughs> <laughs> so before Mike makes this guacamole, I'm actually just going to talk about some... When when I we were when I decided to do the margarita show, I had just seen that Levitate, which is a local um, uh, store in Marshfield. Surf shop. It's a surf shop, and it's a cantina and a music venue. They had published that they had come out with a surf cantina margarita in a can that they're selling at a local liquor store. So I thought, you know, this will be great. We'll try. We'll try this. Um, this it has tequila and blood orange liqueur in it, and it's it's uh, 
made with, you know, all matching, you know, fresh squeezed lime juice and agave, which to me, both of these, the, the other um, mar bottled margarita I'm going to try is this Rustic Spirits Margarita. This was recommended by a friend of ours, Chris. Um, and the the difference between these two, this is canned and this is uh, uh, 10, 10 proof and this is bottled and this is 23.4 proof. This too is made with fresh lime juice. Now, you know, it, and that to me is the key whenever you're doing anything with, um, you know, something that's pre-mixed. I find that anything that doesn't use the fresh lime juice is actually too acidic. It actually really bothers my stomach. So we are going to taste test these today, tonight. And, uh, and then I'm going to make, after Mike makes his guacamole, we will uh, make... So I'm just going to put this in, I got a little ice cube on that, that one. Easy with my box there, baby. Yeah. So I'm going to, oh, I'm going to come off. It's okay. Yep. It's on there. Yep, it's on there. So we're going to, I'm going to start with the, uh, the Mexicana Surf Cantina Margarita. Now, as I pour this, I see there's some carbonation in it which I don't know how I feel about that. I really don't want carbonation in my, uh, in my margarita. It definitely tastes like it only has 10% alcohol. I say it almost tastes more like a lime soda or maybe like that lime Ricky. It's not, it's not bad. It ta it's tasty, but it's also it's also not what I would consider a margarita. It's more like a lime soda. You really don't get much tequila flavor in it. My honest opinion is, is I'd buy it if I was in a dire situation and I needed a margarita. But honestly, or else, maybe in the boat in the I don't summer. Know. Yeah, maybe in the boat. Because you know, if you can drink a few, I I don't know how how it would how a few of them would be on the yeah. stomach. I guess I'm not a huge fan of it, only in the fact that it, um, the carbonation went away extremely quick. By the time I got it, the carbonation was gone. Um, you don't really taste the tequila. You don't taste the orange liquor. You don't really taste that it's a margarita. If, I get, if you did a blind taste test, you would, I don't know, you may struggle to figure out what it is. So, anyway. Uh, the next one we're going to taste is this uh, Rustic Spirits. This is actually, again, also made local to us in Massachusetts. This is uh, made in Weymouth, Mass. So, and then this one is a higher proof in alcohol. It, it is not carbonated at all. It looks, well, actually, it, it looks, uh, you know, like there's less lime juice in it. Yeah, the Rexicana definitely looks like a margarita, but it just doesn't have the, the true taste of a good margarita. No. That is tasty. Again, there is a slight aftertaste. I, I think all of these have to have some sort of preservative or something in them that, that I'm tasting. It's good. Again, if you were just wanted to go somewhere and you know grab a bottle and didn't want to make your yeah. own bottle, um, you know, you may want to try the, uh, the I would Rex grab that Rex. over the Rex Canada if I was yeah. gonna pick up a bottle to go for some reason. Um so does that come in a cork with cork in it? That yes, okay. this, this comes in a wine bottle with an actual cork, cork okay. in it. So there's not a kind of screw on cap. So I will let Mike make his uh, guacamole, and then I will make um, the two cocktails. Uh, one, the, uh, the first one I'm going to make is the classic margarita. So a classic margarita is really um, in the family of cocktails, which is called a daisy. Uh, which is two parts liquor, one part liqueur, and one part lime juice or or lemon. Yeah, you can make daisies with with all kinds of liquors. But Mike is now ready, so I am going to put on a food cam and I'm going okay. to hide this camera. So I just need to grab one thing out of here. So Mike is going to make his famous. Uh, so this, you may want to sit down because this is going to take about an hour. It honestly isn't, but um, 
You want to put that closer to you? Okay. So. So what I do, um, some people. The tomato is in the camera. Your hand is. If you move your hand up. Okay. You need. Okay. Sorry, I, all that is there. I can't is the, see any of it. So I know, just which is why I'm trying to say, if you put your like the hand needs to be right there. Okay. Just trying to give you a little correction, baby. All right. I know that's hard for you to take. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to a guy with a huge knife. <laughs> So a lot of people peel um, their avocados. I don't necessarily do that. I like to just, as you saw, just slice it down all the way through long ways. Then you just take your knife, give it a hit, and you're done with that. And then what I do is I just take my spoon and just kind of scoop it out of there. Okay. I know, I, I bought an avocado scooping tool, a special avocado scooping tool. Yeah, Mike well. Likes, Mike likes to go old school. school. Yeah, this is the way I was always, I've always done it, and I never think to use that tool, but I do use a lot of tools. And uh, I have a new pan coming tomorrow, so I'm excited about that. So as you can see, you're just scooping out this uh, avocado. I didn't want to do this ahead of time only because then I'd have to hit it with lime juice and I didn't want to change anything with the recipe um, because it will oxidize or turn brown fairly quickly. Okay, so um, what I have here is my guacamole and I'm going to now take just some lime juice and I'm just going to throw this on there and I had squeezed up a bunch of limes this morning and put it into a jar so I wouldn't have to go through that process but Shannon has this really nice lemon and lime squeezer and I used that for the first time and that was super good I really that was so easy compared to the twisty thingy and all that so so what I'm doing here is just giving this all a nice spin around in the lime juice and you know I say in, on the recipe that you you know you then drain off the lime juice as you can see I never have any lime juice left over and so I'm not gonna really worry about that okay so I'm gonna now take uh, uh, my salt I have let's see how much salt about a half a teaspoon of salt I put just a tiny pinch of pepper in there I'm just gonna Throw that in there. I do a quarter teaspoon of chipotle because I like that. It I makes like, it nice and smoky. It gives it a real It does. Good. And then I'm um, going to add my smoked paprika and my half a teaspoon of um, cumin. And this is my cayenne pepper. This is about a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Okay. And so what you want to do here is, um, well, I guess you could just go ahead and squish it all up a little bit. I kind of like our guacamole. I don't like it smooth. So what I do is just do sort of a rough press on it. You know what? I think I was supposed to dice in my garlic too. Sorry about that. I was supposed to put that in there and I completely forgot. Okay. I'm going to give this one more. Dice. And while you're dicing that, we got a couple other comments. Um, Kevin Shoey says, the Carolyn remark must be an inside joke. Carolyn says, uh, yes, my husband makes frozen balls too. <laughs> and she also shared the recipe. 
Kevin <laughs> Choi says, gas up. Okay. So um, now what we're going to do is these are all washed out. These tomatoes are. I mean, I, I rinsed them all off because you always want to make sure. Whoops. I actually want to do a long slice on those one more this way. Okay, and now we'll do the dicing. I'm gonna try to go one more this way. And. So now, um, why do you use the plum tomatoes over another type of tomato? Is there a reason? Um, I find they have less seeds and um, they tend to be more of a, a juice tomato, so I, I don't really want a bunch of seeds in there. Um, as you can see, there's not really many seeds. A lot of times if I find that it's too seedy, I will take out the seeds. Some recipes call for you to, to unseed them. Or, you, know, um, you basically want, I'll show you how that's done with this. So what you would do is, then just take your spoon and you get out all this pulp. And then do the same thing. So uh, Betsy Powell just says, hey guys, we completely Completely agree on the prepackaged margaritas. Too sour, too sweet. Okay. And then what I have here is a little bit of cilantro. I'm not a huge cilantro guy. I like it, but not mm. tons of it. This I, is about a tablespoon. This is what I called for in the recipe. If you like more, you can add more. I know Shannon likes I it. I honestly think this is what makes this uh, guacamole so good is because I don't know how many recipes actually call for the, uh, the cilantro. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in, it calls, the recipe calls for a half jalapeno, but we're kind of. He uh, likes things spicy. Yes. So one of the reasons that we're doing this show so early, because you know, as everyone knows, you know, Cinco de Mayo is May 5th, was that you know the beginning of May has a lot of events and activities. So next week, um, which is May 30th, which is the day before the Kentucky Derby, we are gonna do um, we're gonna do a Kentucky Derby uh, show and feature uh, Kentucky bourbon. And we'll have to figure out what, uh, probably a, a, some sort of uh, barbecue. And then the um, and then the following week, we have a guest. You ready? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, so I added in the jalapeno, and I have some diced onion. Can you see that? Okay. okay. Yeah. And then what you want to do, because you have tomatoes in there in the cilantro, you don't want to bruise it all up. And you just want to gently fold this in. Okay. And folding is just really the process of just slowly mixing and not being aggressive with everything. So I may have put a few too many onions in this. I think it's got more than what I normally do. Um, but there's a little larger onion, but. That's nice and chunky and mm. And then I need just a little, there's some lime juice there. There is some lime juice here. Just a tiny bit of that. And what you're going to do is, what I like to do is just spread this out. And then I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit of lime juice over this. Just a little bit, okay? Thank you. And I'm not done. He's not done. Take your saran wrap. So how, how far in advance before serving this do you tend to make this? Um, 
depending on what I'm doing, what you really want to do is let this sit for about an hour at room temperature. So what I'm doing here is I'm pushing this all down to get all the air out, just in case some of that lime juice that I just added in doesn't get onto the spot, get onto everything. This will create sort of a barrier and prevent it from the oxidation or, or starting that turning brown. So what I'll do is I'll let this sit for about an hour at room temperature. And then if I'm not gonna use it till let's say tomorrow or the next day, I will then just put it into, um, uh, I'll keep it like that, maybe put a lid on it and then um, put it in the refrigerator. Okay, so um, so that is the the guacamole that I've been making. I started making this in 2009, and I've never once shared the recipe until this week. So, um, and you guys got to remember with when when I cook and stuff like that, feel free to modify everything if you don't like um, your food super spicy or very spicier, you like it spicier, you know, take a little chance and, and change it up a little bit. None of this is cut in stone. This is just the way that I prepare this and, and have. And, um, but feel free, you know, like this Mexican pot roast that I made tonight. Um, want me to bring that over and show everybody what it looks like? Sure. Okay. Yeah. That or you can. Yeah. I mean, just take a second, but. So we had a couple comments. Carolyn said, I'm on Shannon's side. Love cilantro. And uh, Stephanie Norman said, mm, need to make guac now. Uh, Jan says, looks yummy. And Kevin said, you guys have succeeded to make me hungry as usual. You know, I'm always so glad that, uh, oh, let me turn on the camera. Okay. So this was a wait, three. Wait, wait, wait. All right. Sorry. If you go on to Francis Corner Bar, or maybe you're there already, I don't know where you're watching. This started out as about a 3.2 pound chuck roast. Um, it was a rolled chuck roast. So I um, added a bunch of spices. You stand here. You can, they can see that. You can see it here. Okay. So, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so it was about a three pound chuck roast. Um, it was a rolled chuck roast that I got at Roach Brothers. And, um, I don't. I didn't post any of the recipe or the ingredients on because I wasn't sure how it was going to come out. And what I did is I found a recipe that I liked, and then I sort of added in some of my own um, changes to it because I, I never follow necessarily the recipe 100% unless I'm baking because baking is chemistry. So I'm going to serve this as tacos, and it's got tomatoes, onions, garlic, a bunch of different um, Spanish Mexican style spices, and then I know this doesn't look all that appealing. Sorry, he's coming back. I'm coming back. I have tons of stuff to talk about. So <laughs> these are refried beans that I that I make. Um, I don't use the, the canned stuff because it, it just doesn't, I don't know, I just don't like it. So what I did here is I sauteed two slices of lean bacon. Um, that purple onion that I used in the guacamole, I then sauteed that in the bacon with after the bacon got pretty well done um, in that bacon grease. And then I threw in um, a can of... Uh, drained and rinsed pinto beans and then um, I let that all kind of mix in and then I added in some spices and I just let that sort of I let those spices sort of brown in with all of that um, and then I added in some beef stock and stirred that all in and then I just let everything sort of reduce so this isn't quite done yet but it's it's getting there as you can see um, it's really tasty if you like Mexican fried beans it's a super simple recipe. I would never buy the old El Paso canned refried beans. That is. So Sandy said that sounds much more interesting than ground beef tacos. And I agree. That was, uh, um, I had actually found that recipe when I was, uh, or uh, uh, the, the concept of that recipe, not this specific recipe that he used, when I was looking for uh, how to make that Union Fair beef, which I will absolutely do a show on that. Yes, we will. So, let's see. Oh, Dory says, hola, thanks for the inspiration. You are welcome. I'm ready for a cocktail, a okay. real cocktail. Are you ready? Okay. A real well, cocktail. You should be after all that talking. You must <laughs> be thirsty. I need something to wet my whistle. 
<laughs> so as I was explaining earlier, um, the, tr the traditional margarita, the original margarita is, is in the daisy family. And the, da the daisy is, is uh, two parts liquor, one part liqueur, and one part uh, a sour, and, uh, either lemon or lime juice. And the sour, and it, but it's very subtle. So most of the classic margaritas that you get now add a sugar um, to that mix to balance it out. And so, you know, so there are dry margaritas and then there's kind of this classic is a kind of a middle of the road margarita and then you can make a sweet margarita by adding more. But basically a margarita is, you know, two ounces of a tequila and then um, an orange liqueur and, and I like Contro. Uh, but you can use triple sec. Uh, you can use dry curacao. If you use the dry curacao, you may want to add a little more uh, sweetener to it because it is drier. It doesn't have as much sugar in it as the um, as the contro does. So this recipe. Oh, let me just put it up. Okay. So this recipe, the classic, calls for two ounces of blanco tequila three quarters ounce of your orange flavored liqueur, a quarter ounce of agave uh, syrup. And the agave syrup is, um, is made, I actually do two parts of agave to one part water, and then one ounce of the fresh squeezed lime juice. Now, um, and the reason that you wanna use the agave syrup is, is the, and it's the same one, the next cocktail I'm gonna make actually has honey in it. Um, you, it's, if you don't add some water to it, it gets really sticky and you pour it into your shaker and then you add ice and it just, it ends up sticking in the shaker and you don't really get any in the cocktail. So, uh, so that's why you always want to make sure when you're using um, a honey or a thick syrup, thick, thick syrup you want to add water to it. <clears throat> Okay, so there is the two ounces of tequila. Are you making two or just one? No, I'm just going to make one because you, you can have this one and then I will have the, uh, the next one. And then three quarters of ounce. Ooh. I know I'm getting low on all my, uh, um, this is the three quarter ounce of the orange liqueur. A quarter ounce of the agave. So I also have the honey syrup. You can see the agave is much darker. And we use this Trader Joe's um, uh, organic agave, which is delicious. So I'm just going to do a quarter ounce of that. And then one ounce of the fresh squeezed lime juice. And as always, when you use lime juice, you want to make sure you squeeze and then strain strain it the other thing that i was thinking so last week not last week the week before last week was a disaster but <laughs> oh yeah i'm supposed to talk about that it was a, yeah it was a broadcasting disaster but um the week before when we made the gimlets i made that lime cordial and we had actually after the show we had made a gimlet I'm going to keep this, uh, actually I'm going to keep the shaker, as long as you don't open up the shaker, it creates a vacuum in there and it stays cold and it won't over dilute your cocktail. But um, you can choose to garnish your classic margarita with salt. Um, some people don't like the salt. What I like to do is just, you know, you take your, uh, your citrus and I like to just rim, you know, part of the glass. That way you don't get, um, you know, too much in your cocktail. Now I'm actually using Celtic smoked salt. So it's a salt, it's sea salt. So sea salt is not gonna be as salty as like a kosher salt, but you can use kosher salt. Um, and this is a smoked flavored sea salt. I thought that would be interesting um, in the cocktail. So I'm gonna put, Put my uh, one, ball in there. My, my ice ball in there, or you can just you know put your fill your glass with ice. And what then, was it nice clear though, weren't they? Yes. Who made those? Oh, you did, of course. They're your ball. 
And then we're gonna uh, double strain it into our glass with our ice. And then this takes a, uh, a lime wedge garnish. I'm just gonna squeeze that in and float it on top. So cheers, there is your classic margarita. Now the next margarita, it, well the next cocktail I'm gonna make is a take on, it's, it's just a twist on margarita. It is called a tiger tail. I mean a lazy tiger. And my sister, my, actually months ago, my sister sent me an article from the St. Louis magazine about this new bar that had opened up called the Lazy Tiger. And she had sent me this recipe because she said it sounded good. So, but it took me a while because at first it calls for this Clement Creole shrub, which is this orange liqueur um, that has, is a rum-based liqueur. And I could only find this at, I couldn't find it. Actually, now I've, I've been able to find it more, but I had to go to Total Wines or more. So, so I found this and you can tell I like it because I'm almost out of this. And it also called for this spice, tahine. So tahine is a classic Mexican spice. This was also hard to find. I, I, had, I found this at Aldi's. So it took me a while to find all of the ingredients for this cocktail, which is why I, I haven't, haven't made it sooner, but I'm actually glad that I waited to make it for this show. And this is also a mezcal-based cocktail, which I love mezcal. So, because I love anything smoky. So this takes an ounce and a half of mezcal, and it takes three quarter ounce of the shrub, the orange shrub. So this is kind of in place of the orange liqueur. And then this one is gonna be on this, well, the shrub is not as sweet. There's not as much sugar in the shrub as there is in the Contro, which is why this one is going to take, um, it takes three quarters ounce of the honey syrup. So it's going to be on the sweeter side, but then, then the uh, classic, and it takes a half an ounce of the lime juice. And I'm going to add ice to it. And I've already prepared the garnish for this cocktail. That's where the, um, um, oops. Okay. I'm just throwing your balls around. Ow! <laughs> um, so the garnish for this is you basically uh, take half of an orange wheel and you sprinkle the uh, tahine spice on top of it. And then we're gonna float that on top of the cocktail. So I already done that. And again, because anything with juice in it, I like to double strain. I'm gonna double strain that into the double wrap size. And then we are going to float the orange wheel on top. Well, that's pretty. So that is the tiger's tail. Okay. So let's cheers. Cheers. Love you, baby. Love you. Thanks, nice job. Mm, this is good. Mm, this one's good too, but I bet the second ones will be better. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys as always. Thanks for joining us. Please uh, like, share, and Kevin, comment. Kevin Showy says, You two are very entertaining. Thanks for giving the weekend off to a good start. Well, Kevin, thank you for watching. We always appreciate when everybody watches. We do, and, yeah. uh, um, We love doing this show. So, so next week is Kentucky Derby Week. And uh, we'll have some fancy-ass hats for that show, too. <laughs>
Oh my gosh, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> so, so cheers. Have a great weekend, everybody. Cheers, everybody. Bye bye. Bye.